I remember when I was about 10 or 11 years old, I couldn't wait to be 13 because I was going to be Mr. Teenager. And I was going to be really cool. And I wanted to wear my shirt tail out and I wanted to wear penny loafers with no socks because that was the fad in North Charlotte back in those days. And I couldn't wait to be a teenager to experience all the joys of being 13. Well, I got to be 13, but guess what? Next year, I added, a, added another candle and then another candle. I couldn't wait to be 16 because when I was 16, I'd get my license and then I could get out on the road in my 1959 Ford Galaxy 500. It was a family heirloom. It was a tank. I couldn't wait. Guess what? 16 candles on my cake. And then the next year I added another candle and another one and another one. And what I found out is that after 16, they seem to go faster. Have you discovered that? They seem to accumulate. And right now there's about 20 years of my life that's missing. It seems like it ought to be 1990 again. And I wonder why my little children aren't small anymore and why I have grandchildren. What happened to all those years? John Maxwell says it's like this. He says, life is like a roll of toilet paper. The closer you get to the end, the faster it goes. <laughs> have you found that to be true? I found that to be true in my life. And even though we survive accidents and we don't have major car wrecks and we're not injured for life, we're not killed in a car wreck, we're adding years every single year. We're getting older and older and we're moving closer and closer to the point that we're not going to be here anymore. That's why we need to live like we're dying. I listened to our president when he was in West Virginia. He was mourning the loss of those miners. My heart was moved. First of all, I can't imagine working that deeply in the belly of the earth. I can't imagine the claustrophobic feelings you'd have. But these men do that every single day. Over 20 of them were killed in that explosion that took place. And then he talked about a young man by the name of Josh Knapper. Remember him? Just a young man. And on the day before the explosion, Josh wrote a letter. They don't really know why. But this young miner in West Virginia wrote a letter. Here's what he wrote. Quote, if anything happens to me, I'll be looking down from heaven at you all. I love you. Take care of my baby. Tell her that daddy loves her. She's beautiful. She's funny. Just take care of my baby girl. The next day he was gone. He had no idea. But it seems like maybe something moved upon him to write down his feelings. And he wrote, folks, like he was dying. He wrote a note. And don't you know that note will become incredibly precious and special to that family and that little girl when she grows up. Because daddy wrote that on the day before he died. I want to tell you, we need to live like we're dying. We need to live like we're dying. We don't know when it's going to take place. It might be when somebody's 16 years old or 26 years old or 36 or 86 or 106. We don't know. There's just no guarantee. But I really believe it's sound advice to live like you're dying. Here's the second thing. When you live like you're dying, you'll think about the finish. You'll think about life's finish. Next Sunday, they're going to run the Coca-Cola 600 at the Speedway. About 43 cars will be in that race competing for victory, going for the checkered flag. Before they run, they're going to qualify. They're going to find out who's fastest. And the fastest man is going to be on the pole. He's going to start from number one position. But here's what I found as a race fan. I love NASCAR. I really do. I like NASCAR. I'm just an old redneck. I like NASCAR. But you know, here's what I found. I found out that most of the time, not always, but most of the time, the guy that starts on the pole doesn't win the race. He's got the fastest car in qualification trim, 
But on race day, there are so many variables, so many things that can happen. And seldom, seldom does the man that starts first finish first. Sometimes it happens, but not, not usually. It's somebody else from way back in the pack. And that proves a principle to me. The most important thing in life is not how well you start, but it's how you finish. That's what really makes the difference. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. That's so true in NASCAR, and it's true in life. The graduates will walk down the aisle at 1045, and they have finished well. It may not have started well that first day in kindergarten. Might not have been that exciting. That first day in first grade might not have gone so smoothly. Maybe that first day in middle school, that transition period, sixth grade, you're in a whole new ball game. Maybe that didn't go so well. Or what about that first day in high school? You're a ninth grader and all around you are these giants and you feel like you're in Gulliver's Travels. It may not have gone so well. There might have been some rough spots. My roughest grade was the seventh grade. Man, I didn't think I was going to live through the seventh grade. It was tough. I had just come out of elementary school, and sixth graders at that time were the big men on campus. You go to the seventh grade because we didn't have middle school. We had junior high. <laughs> Remember junior high? And you go over there, and you're nothing, man. You're a scuzzball. Because there are ninth graders on the campus. So you're zero, man. And that was a big transition. I really struggled with that. That was the worst year in all of my school career. I barely passed seventh grade. It was tough. Maybe it wasn't always pretty for you. But you finished well. Because here are the graduates now with their caps and gowns and the diploma in their hand in a few days. They have finished well. I believe with all my heart, when you live like you're dying, you've got to realize, hey, I'm not sure how long I'm going to be here, but I want to finish strong. And I want my last lap to be my best lap. I want the last lap of my life to be the best lap of all. I want to finish well. I know a lot of people who had great starts. Personally, I know these people, many of them. They had great potential. They had talent. They had opportunity. They had education. They had status. You name it, they had it. But a lot of them didn't really finish that well. One of my dear friends for years and years was Gordon Weekly. Gordon Weekly had been a pastor of a Baptist church here in town. But according to his own story, you can read it in an autobiography called The Bomb of Gilead. He became addicted to prescription drugs. And Gordon lost his family. He lost his church. He basically lost everything in his life. It was a total wreck. But then he came back. He came back. And he was able to overcome the addiction. He was able to rebuild his life. He started the rescue mission downtown. And he was instrumental in a lot of men finding Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And a lot of people's lives being changed. And I applauded that. Gordon was a good friend. More than once he spoke from this pulpit at Mount Harmony Baptist Church. I love that man. But then came the tragic news that Gordon Wickley had died. He had passed away in the Asheville area in the western part of the state. And when they tried to identify what the problem was, they found that He actually had alcohol in his system. And somehow there had been a relapse. And I don't say this to condemn Gordon Wickley. I love that man. But i got to tell you, that's how easy it happens. And I know Gordon Wickley did not want to finish like that. He didn't want to finish with alcohol in his body, in a parking lot, dead, in Asheville. That's not the way he wanted to finish but he just didn't finish well. That last lap, folks, is the most important. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. 